Hi there, I'm Mary Susie from Bead Me a Story, and today I'm going to show you how to make this lovely helm weave bracelet. You'll notice that this is a fairly simple design made with somewhat large rings. I've done this in a couple other colors that you can choose from, but I love the neutrality of this color palette that I use today. It's really going to go with so many different things and you can mix and match it, which is great with a very fundamental chain weave like this that uh, you'll be able to wear it with a lot of different things that you make. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started learning the helm weave. So to start this project, the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead beforehand and apply some microcrystalline wax to my clasp. This will dry almost instantly. I just rubbed it on with a paper towel and rubbed it off. It might leave a little residue. Just let it sit for a few minutes and you can buff it all off to a high shine again. You'll notice with my jump rings that I've gone ahead and pre-closed all of my matte champagne jump rings. I'm going to lay some out for myself. And then I have also the matte seafoam jump rings, which I'm going to also put some out for myself to pick up and move those out of the way. And then we have some silver jump rings as well right here. So to get started, I'm going to take four of these matte champagne closed jump rings or whatever color you're working with is fine. Take four of these jump rings and we're going to end up using three of these jump rings to create our first segment. So I'm going to take one of these open jump rings. This is a 20 gauge 532nd and I'm going to pick up all four of these matte champagne closed jump rings. These are 18 gauge one quarter inch jump rings. Now I'm going to go ahead and close this jump ring. You want to spend a little bit of extra time with matte jump rings because they will show their seam a little bit more than shiny ones. And I just want to show you that sometimes I will even go through the effort of turning it around and reclosing again because sometimes that will just give you a little bit better angle on the metal to make it straight across and to make this seem almost invisible. It's only necessary sometimes but uh, just so you know that you can do that and you want to get as nice a closures as possible. So now I'm taking my second jump ring and you can see I've passed it through two of these. I'm going to pass it through two more. This is just following the same path that that first jump ring did. For the first jump ring it's going to uh, drop down but that's totally okay. And then once again we're going to get a good grip on our jump ring and we're going to try and close it and trying to make that seam absolutely invisible if possible. So you don't want to work aluminum jump rings too much because you can break them but you'll notice I'm not completely opening. I'm just trying to get this seam as small as I possibly can on that jump ring. Okay, and then I'm going to take a third jump ring. And I'm going to try and pass through all four of these larger champagne jump rings once again. So that's a third jump ring. Of the matte sea foam. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and lay these out. 
So you can see that I have two of the larger jump rings on one side and two of the larger jump rings on another side. And then we have three of the smaller jump rings, which were our 20 gauge 532nd jump rings in the center. Now what we want to do is I'm going to bring in one of these silver jump rings. So you can see we have a whole lot of mat and then I'm going to put the shiny in the center of all this mat and that's going to give us a nice finish to our final piece of jewelry. So this first piece that we do is going to be the most difficult. It just is a little wonky to try and get around all these jump rings but I'm going to try and just get this around these three jump rings that are in the center. Oh, and it worked out really nicely. So you can see I've got two of the large jump rings on one side and two on the other. And this silver jump ring is just surrounding those three jump rings that were holding them all together. And then we're going to close our jump ring. Okay, now I'm lifting this up with my finger so that you can see how this is all laying together. And basically, this is just all folded the wrong way. So all we need to do is take this top one from the left side, and I'm going to fold it over here. So see how it went over top of this silver one? And now if I flip this over, you can see I have three on the right side and only two on the left. So I'm going to take this one that was at the bottom and I'm going to let it come over here. And see, now we have a captured silver ring in the center of all these other rings. So as I said, that first transition is the hardest. After this, it gets a little bit easier to do that silver ring in the center because you have a little bit more to work with. So now I'm going to take one of my smaller jump rings and I'm going to pass through two of the large jump rings from one of my existing rows. And then I'm going to pick up two more jump rings. So that two more is going to become our next row. Okay, and we're going to go through the same procedure of just making sure that all of our closures are as nice as possible. And notice when I grab my jump ring, I'm at about 3 o'clock and I'm about at about 9 o'clock. So if I look at the jump ring as a clock, I'm grabbing with, with my right hand at 3 and my left hand at about 9 o'clock. You can go up or down a little bit, but that is a general rule of where is best to grab your jump rings. If you need to go up to 10 o'clock or down to 8 o'clock or up to 2 o'clock and down to 4 o'clock, that's okay. But that is just generally where you want to shoot for. Now again, I'm turning this one around because I could see that my metal wasn't perfectly straight. And this is gonna help straighten everything out. And notice too that as I am closing, I'm not just moving back and forth like this. I'm also pushing these together slightly as I do that motion. Okay, so again, I'm going through two of these that I added and the, the, the two that were already here, just like the other two jump rings I just added. So it's going to pass through four of the large champagne jump rings. And then I'm going to close this. Okay, so each time I'm using three of these smaller jump rings to add a new row of larger jump rings. Okay, and now it's time to add another of our silver jump rings. Now this time we're going to approach this a little bit differently. So the first thing we're going to do is pass between 
these two champagne jump rings that are here. And then we're going to kind of bring this silver up and try and get each one of these jump rings to flop to either side so that we can get this closed easily. And I'll show you what I mean by that. Okay. So you can see there's two here and then there's two here. So I want to pass through these first two that are joined on both sides with small jump rings. Okay, so once I get through there, I'm going to try and work this jump ring around so that it can be on top of the silver jump ring. And then I'm just going to let it flop back towards me. And the same thing with this one on the other side. I'm going to let it just flop back towards me. So see how I have these two in the center that were from the previous row and I'm just letting these fold back. And that's just so I can get a good uh, grab on these jump ring, on this silver jump ring and close it. Okay, and now if I grab this at the start and then just let it drop down, you can see that these two jump rings that had been folded back are just going to drop around it. Okay, so all we're going to do from now on is we're just going to continue to make this, uh, this strand of work. I'll show you just a little bit larger piece. So you can see just like before, we're going to add another a pair of champagne and we're going to use three of these seafoam jump rings to do that and then we're going to continue adding our silver rows in between. Okay, so let's get that to the length that we want it to be and then I'll show you how to add the clasp. So you can see here that our helm weave bracelet is now complete and I laid this out with a couple other bracelets because I wanted to show you a point about sizing. So I almost finished this one row too small and it seemed like it was going to fit my wrist but it didn't seem like it was going to leave a lot of room so I was deciding whether to make it a little bit tighter or a little bit looser because as you can see these are very large rings in this particular project. So what I ended up doing was laying it out beside some other bracelets that I plan to wear it with. And that gave me a really good indication of the size that I was going to need exactly. So you can see these aren't a perfect match, but they're pretty close. And one bracelet will probably be worn up a little bit higher. And then, you know, the next couple below it. So this was a great way for me to figure out exactly how long I wanted to make this bracelet. So just to come back and show you that when I got to the end and I put in my last silver ring, these two end pieces, these two end jump rings, were attached to the slide clasp using two smaller jump rings. Okay, and I was able to use two jump rings at each hole of the clasp because they fit really nicely. Now you can see these fit right in there. Um, sometimes you'll only be able to use one jump ring and other times the hole will be large enough to allow two. And if I bring this around, I'll just show you with a slide clasp that basically this just slides together. It has this little tension post here. But also too, see how the where the holes are is what slides into this little groove here. And these are really easy to get on and off. So I hope you've enjoyed this project. Helm weave is really fun to make. There's a lot of other ways to make this. Besides this, you can do it in lots of other sizes and with lots of other materials as well. So this one should get you started so that you have the fundamentals of how to make a helm weave bracelet.